Thanks, David. Um, so yes, um, thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Um, as mentioned, my name is Nassie Bannerman. I'm a senior reporter with Capacity Media. Uh, before uh, we jump into the discussion today, I'd like to give our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start with uh, Nick. Nick Lane, would you like to introduce yourself? There we go. Hi, thanks, Natalie. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Lane. I am Chief Insight Analyst from Mobile Squared. We're a business intelligence uh, consultancy and research firm. We're currently in the process of just putting together all of our forecasts to look at the business messaging space, Look, also looking at CPaaS, and also we'll soon be looking at the impact this will have on payments. Great. Etienne, over to you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm Etienne Dupont. I'm based in Paris. I'm in charge of business messaging solutions at Rocket and Viber. So Viber being one of the leading uh, messaging uh, app uh, globally uh, and letting users having messaging and calling uh, between themselves. And we are enabled our business messaging solutions uh, a few years ago. Julia, over to you. Hello. Great to meet you all. So my name is uh, Julia Lehmann. I'm the co-founder of On4, a company that is uh, developing innovation solutions with a strong focus on chatbots. I'm also a lecturer for digital marketing at the University of Nürtingen in Germany. And Raj, over to you. Thank you, Natalie, and uh, hi, everyone. My name is Raj. My full name is a bit longer. It's Rajeshi Purkayasta, but you just call me Raj. I'm representing Tata Communications today. We are uh, into telecom, multiple things. And, uh, you know, uh, one thing that I can tell you is that uh, this world is changing and we are trying to change with that. So if I start telling you which of the products and services we are in, it'll take a long time. So I'll just dive into it. Over to you, Natalie. Perfect. So yeah, let's let's get the conversation going. I mean, I think probably uh, one of the the biggest kind of macro level questions, I suppose, many people are probably asking themselves at the moment is, you know, the role that RCS will kind of play in com conversational commerce. Um, you know, do you guys have any particular thoughts on what that kind of will look like in in and how the the two will kind of uh, connect to each other, for for lack of a better word? Does anybody want to uh, start us off? Yeah, I can, I can go first since I was the last to come in. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'd actually look at it from uh, the point of view of customers first, right? And if I put myself as a customer, uh, you know, in that case, I don't want to really interact with a, uh, you know, a, somebody who wants to sell me goods uh, in terms of, uh, you know, sending me junk messages, right? We get a lot of them today. Uh, if, if you look at emails, I'm sure, you know, uh, Nick or Etienne or Julia, you'd not open emails at this point of time. A lot of them goes into spam. Uh, and that's where something like, uh, you know, a conversational commerce or RCS comes in where uh, you can actually start interacting with a customer like me in a very different manner. Because, you know, a lot of us today love to uh, chat on uh, WhatsApp. So, you know, if you're buying something new, which is a bit complex, I'd like to chat with somebody on WhatsApp rather than doing it on SMS, for example, right? Or uh, if somebody can send me information which helps me in that decision making on something like WhatsApp, it, it helps me. Now, this is only one use case, but when you actually look at, uh, you know, a, a machine, for example, an IoT device sending me something which is helping me doing some decision making on the fly, when I'm entering, say, a, a coffee shop and tells me that, hey, there's a new coffee which, which may actually be of interest to you, it changes the whole uh, you know, paradigm of the way you're looking at messaging and the way uh, you, know, you can then converse with the customers. And I, for one, love those kind of things, right? So I'm sure uh, Nick or Julia or Etienne will have other examples. You know, over to you. Well... Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, texting changed the way we communicate in general, but it's it's kind of getting a little bit out of date because um, we want 
messaging that can offer but much more things than just texting. We want to share large files. We want to chat with big groups. We want to be able to do payments. Uh, and and um, that's exactly what RCS offers. You can, you can send uh, QR codes. Um, um, the, the brands can, can be verified and can, can have a verified sender IDs. This gains a lot of trust. And I think that's something that, that uh, uh, end users or customers actually expect right now. So I, I honestly see a big potential in RCS. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at Vibros, it's like we, we, we started like to offer rich communication solutions like quite a, a long time ago. And obviously we have a, we have uh, we have developed and uh, and uh, and continue developing uh, our product and uh, what, what Julia was saying is exactly uh, we, we are seeing these trends where uh, brands and users don't want just to send just message but want to uh, to manage uh, uh, fruitful conversations whatever it's for customer support or to buy a product or ask questions after a product being bought or, or, or whatever and adding features to help them uh, into uh, uh, conversing with the brand is key. Uh, it can be by text, it could be by call, and create this uh, uh, overall systems where uh, it's uh, it's facilitating uh, this uh, uh, this communications. And uh, uh, one of the key, um, and as Raj was saying, is like messaging should not become, you know, uh, in the futures a new uh, spam inbox like mails uh, has become, and 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 brands need to apprehend it in a in a much different way. Uh, to make it uh, and, and, and keep this uh, uh, this interest from the users because there is a big interest from the users, uh, but keep nurturing it in the, in the long term. I think this will be one of the key in the future as well. I think just from our or my perspective, it's it's looking at what is the potential for RCS. And it's it's obviously huge because there are over was it three billion or so Android devices in the market. All of them potentially can be used to. Uh, communicate with um, RCS in one way or another, you know, not trying to get into the whole Google versus um, the open uh, RCS alliance or anything. But if we assume that they're all one and it's one big happy family, then yeah, in, in theory, RCS will present an, a huge opportunity for conversational commerce. And, you know, as you guys already said, and I fully agree with you, that at the moment you've got brands that are using businesses. We've seen a huge spike in traffic. Um, because of the pandemic in 2020, you know this is a, a brand. This is a channel that brands are, are, are increasingly turning to in terms of messaging, and it, at the moment it's very limited in, in terms of SMS in terms of what they can actually achieve on that. So, by adding that level of richness, then that will fundamentally change how brands spend money on the channel, but also how they use it and how they engage with customers. You know, we're seeing from case studies already, admittedly, you know, these case studies are, you know, from the trials, they're, they're basically just MMS on, 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 on acid, in effect. But, you know, they're a slightly better version of MMS is, is what kind of what we're seeing with RCS. So a lot of the trials don't even really demonstrate the functionality of RCS, and yet their engagement levels are already significantly higher. So in terms of the role it will play, yeah, it's going to be absolutely huge. So will WhatsApp, you know, I'm sure same with Viber. I mean, ultimately, you can see what's going to, what should happen if you look at what's going on in China with WeChat, where it's actually just beyond a messaging platform and just become a platform, you know, on which everything pretty much occurs. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's an excellent um, kind of uh, segue into my next question, which is basically moving from one emerging technology to a, 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 another one, which is, you know, CPaaS, you know, one of the things that I came across certainly in, in my research for this panel session was this uh, slightly uh, I wouldn't say untapped, but the opportunity that it, it that's presented with CPaaS and conversational commerce, um, you know, and, and why it's a winning combination for enterprises. Does anybody have any particular thoughts? Well, uh, as mentioned before, uh, talking about the limitations of RCS, it's still pretty much focusing on, on Android. And I, I don't see Apple moving into this ecosystem, to be honest. And of course, this is when uh, CPAS uh, comes into the game because, um, you know, customers already expect that the communication is available everywhere. Uh, they want uh, uh, reliable uh, 
con contacts with brands. They want personalized content. And, and of course, they want it in as many channels as possible. And uh, CPAS provides uh, all of the above with you know, a, a back end communication infrastructure um, presented as a service from, from a vendor that then tightly integrates your own app offerings through through APIs. So I think if you if you want to reach uh, the customer through multiple channels, I think that's that's where you where you should go if if you don't want to uh, you know to to break the bank and if you want to have an easy approach to communication. It's my opinion. We've count. I mean, from from our research, we've calculated how many businesses actually use eight PSMS and we reckon of about the 300 million registered businesses there are globally we we believe less than two and a half percent of companies actually use SMS so when you then start to look at actually you know and if that's a 20 billion dollar market and you look at something like advertising which is what 600 700 billion dollars it shows that brands are willing to spend a lot of money on something you know, digital is, is more than half of that. So, you know, they can see the value in, in, in spending money on digital channels. And yet with messages, messaging being a tiny fraction of that, it shows that this is really an untapped opportunity. But then if you then think actually with CPAS, CPAS can potentially tap in and get into pretty much every uh, company by way of the fact that if you look at something like Microsoft, for example, if they add the CPAS um, functionality onto um, Office, then all of a sudden every laptop, every computer around the world can actually use a CPAS functionality. And then all of a sudden you can reach pretty much every every one of those hundred million, hundreds of millions of businesses. So CPAS, you know, we think really will come, kind of unlock the potential of using message and driving conversational commerce. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, from, from our perspective, so obviously, as advisors, we are working with CPAS companies. They are, they are great partners. Uh, they, they will have a lot of channels because uh, they will also have to create, like to to move from multi uh, multi channels to an omni channel strategy with the brands. Uh, because from a, from a user perspective. Uh, Viber being a mobile publisher, we are in direct front with the, with the, with the users. Um, so, and we are we are developing tools to help brands uh, to communicate uh, with uh, with our users. Uh, at the end of the day, users also are selecting uh, platforms where they have this uh, reliable experience, uh, where they can find brands available all times. And when they have to move from one app to another, let's say. Uh, they don't want you know to lose this history if they want to uh, to continue the conversation the conversation where you left like you are doing with uh, uh with your friend and family so because sometimes you are going to uh, to like a picture on instagram and reply on whatsapp and do something else on messengers and uh, this is a le level of conversations uh, that users uh, in the future and even now uh, are trying to get with the brands and not repeating ten times the same uh, the same discussions like 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 you can have done uh, on call centers or whatever else where you have uh, three person in the row uh, to uh, to fix your issue. And I think this is where CPAS have a as a key to uh, uh, to progress on this and educate brands to uh, to manage it. Yeah, I think uh, you know all the important points were covered. Just one thing that I'd like to add. In terms of you know adding to uh, what Etienne mentioned or uh, you know what Julia mentioned in terms of omni-channel or multiple customer engagement channels, uh, here one thing that CPAS will bring into uh, context is uh, you know programmable workflows, right? And that kind of changes a whole lot of things. Uh, uh, the method in which uh, you know customers can be uh, interacted with uh, or companies can interact with customers, right? So the programmable workflows changes the, the experience of the uh, end customers with uh, whom they are interacting at any point of time. Back to you. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, no, I think that's um, a really interesting point, you know, in terms of, you know, the the kind of the technology behind CPAS and it, enabling the kind of flexibility that's required. Um, again, I think this is a really nice segue to my next point, which is obviously AI. I think we can't have this conversation without speaking about that technology. I mean, it, it just 
we just can't. Um, so when I think of AI, I, I think of, you know, how it's evolving, but I'm also thinking about the limitations which still exist, you know, in terms of how do we kind of create that human uh, factor when, you know, dealing with consumers and that kind of, you know, forward facing role that it has and how do we really see that technology evolving in the the, the conversational commerce space? You know, uh, do we think it's going to uh, deliver what it needs to deliver as, as the kind of needs become more complex? Any thoughts? Yeah, I can go first in this. So, you know, I talked about, uh, you know, programmable workflows, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about AI, the first thing that AI can do is, uh, you know, optimize those workflows, right? And then it can actually bring in some interesting things like uh, sentiment analysis uh, or uh, NLP, you know, in terms of uh, uh, also identifying the customer's mood. Now, a lot of times, specifically when you're chatting with a chatbot, uh, is the chatbot able to understand uh, a negative emotion which is put in the right positive word is, is the question, right? And that's where AI can come in. And, and in the same breath, AI can also help, you know, a physical human being who is an agent uh, by pushing the right sort of information which can help them in that interaction. And, and we've seen multiple examples where, you know, the customer... Uh, has sent mails which is uh, you know of not of the right uh, or is negative, and then uh, when the customer is interacting with the agent, uh, they are being sarcastic, right? And the agent may not be able to understand or pick this up, uh, you know, in in the instant, and that's where AI can tell them, hey, this customer is not happy, and maybe you know you can you can put in uh, the sweetener which which can change the mood, right? So that's where AI can be extremely powerful in in the whole ecosystem that we are talking about. Can AI actually detect sarcasm? <laughs> yes, you can, of course. Uh, you know, no, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the point is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, say I'm, I'm telling you, the, oh, really? Uh, you know, and, and, the, and the tone in which I'm using, or it's really good, right? And before that, I've used a negative context, right? good and negative context when you actually put it on uh, a workflow from an AI perspective, it can tell you that the customer is not happy and they're using those uh, positive words in a negative manner. There are ways and means to do that. I'm sure you know that, Nick. Yeah, I mean, in terms of from chatbots, I mean, from conversation that we have with aggregators who are obviously trying to roll out RCS and also conversations with brands that we have, there seems to be a fair amount of reluctance for brands to actually use chatbots and therefore rely on things like AI, NLP at the moment. You know, in terms of, you know, some of the comments that we've had is that it just seems like a lot of work that we're just not prepared to invest in at the moment, you know, based on you know, what kind of traction, what kind of traffic will this have? You know, I think there have been some clear case studies and use cases from areas such as customer care. And I think that obviously seems like an absolute no-brainer because if you look at obviously what WhatsApp business API is going after, what ABC are going after, you know, that they're, they're pushing for this customer care model. And that makes sense given the size of the marketplace. But in terms of on a, on a, on a conversational commerce side of things, I've got to admit, I'm not really seen much. So I don't know if you guys have seen anything or not, but at the moment that's in itself – you know, kind of says that's where brands are at the moment and they don't see it as a conversational commerce platform just yet. Yes, yeah. absolutely, Nick. So, you know, sorry, ATM, just one point. Uh, you know, uh, you're absolutely right. And when you're specifically talking about this area, you're talking about more of an unstructured to structured, right? And, and uh, from this unstructured to structure, there's a lot of work which needs to be done. And that's where NLP, AI, RPI and all comes in, right? And RPA, sorry, and all comes in. And that would be a very interesting area, which, which I'm sure, uh, you know, we can actually look at. By the way, I've written a patent on this. And, and therefore, I'm very, very, uh, you know, attached to this, uh, uh, to this uh, area per se. It's very exciting. Sorry, Aitin, you're saying something. No, uh, I mean... It really depends on what kind of chatbot we're talking here, because if we're talking, yes, about like uh, solutions, replacing uh, uh, local agents to, uh, to fix an issue, uh, I agree, I'm not, we are not completely there where uh, a pure AI technology is going to 
replace a, a human. I mean, uh, there was some example, like I think it was two or three years ago, Microsoft developed their AI technologies and released a bot and it was a big, uh, <laughs> a big uh, negative buzz because after one day uh, they, they, they succeed to, uh, uh, to, uh, to see the limit of, uh, of the technology. And even if there, are, there, there has been improvement and there will be improvement in the future, one that gets there. Obviously, uh, it can help uh, local agents to, you know, uh, reply to to a to a to small uh, small question that have, do not really need a, a pure human to be replied and faster the relationship with the users and can really be uh, interesting for the users. But at some some point, for the most let's say uh, difficult questions, uh, a local will take over. But on the other side, there are also a full range of of chatbots that are more like transactional chatbot. Let let's call it that is going to offer, that are offering a service uh, directly in messaging apps that users will be able to take over. Uh, so you, you know that you are not talking to an agent. It's a more kind of a, a, mini, a mini website where users are going to transact directly on their messaging apps to, uh, to do some, uh, some operations. And we have numerous of uh, examples at, at Vibers on the bonds on the retail side where uh, users are using their services uh, because uh, they are spending more time on the on messaging app or in Viber in our case, then you know downloading a new apps and it reduce some uh, frictions. Uh, they don't need to uh, log in a new time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and where uh, there is a value to have uh, uh, to have uh, such kind of uh, of chatbot. Well, I, I think we also have to differentiate between uh, you know a simple chatbot or a conversational AI. So everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, but when I'm looking around, especially with um, many of the aggregators um, providing chatbot solutions, they use usually pretty simple drag and drop systems. And um, of course, uh, these bots often appear kind of, of dump and this is kind of uh, frustrating for customers. If I go and have a question or, or need help and the bot doesn't help me, the experience is ra rather frustrating than helpful. So of course it makes sense um, to use AI, but if, if you decide to, to go for conversational AI and you can really have high, um, you know, high returns of investments and, um, you know, we, we were able to, uh, to reduce support costs by 67% uh, for one of our customers. So there is a big potential, but if you decide to go for a chatbot or for conversational AI, it needs to be done right. And there are some, some factors coming back to, uh, to Natalie's question, which AI attributes are needed to, to enhance you know, purchase intentions through digital, in, in, uh, through digital assistance, which is what we are actually looking for. There are three major AI factors. So one of them is um, the perceived, uh, let's see if I pronounce it properly in, in English because I'm German, is the perceived uh, anthropomorphism, you know, the, the human-like beingness of, of the bot. Does it appear like, like a human? And there's a lot of work around like which uh, personality does the bot have? Is it friendly? Is it strict? Is it serious? And all the topic around conversational design which, which needs to be uh, implemented. And there's another topic, which is the perceived intelligence. So is the bot able to, to solve my problem? And if this is done right, you have a, a big benefit in, in conversational AI. So it's just my, my point to this topic. Yeah, no, amazing, amazing points, I think, raised by everybody. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a beat because we've actually had a, a few questions come in and I think it's a, kind of a, a, a nice point to throw some of those in there. Um, so the first one that we had, um, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Um, so the person has asked, um, is recipients that still use um, the Google messaging app um, also, is it applicable only for Android users, what about iOS mobile users? Now, I believe the person's asking whether or not conversational AI is also applicable to iOS mobile users. That's my guess. Does anybody have any thoughts? No? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, no, it's okay. not. <laughs> <In a word. laughs> okay. So, I mean, okay. it's for Android. It's the same way as, as you know, it's, it's basically saying is iMessage on Apple going to be available on Android. So it's not. So yeah. they're not. No. no. Okay. We do have another one. So I'll keep going. Uh, so somebody has asked, will the SMS marketing be able to deliver more conversion ratio? Um, will RCS be able to match the rich features of WhatsApp or any other messaging service? Any thoughts on that? Well, RCS is able to offer most of the features that uh, WhatsApp already supports, including some more like carousels, for example. 
and uh, and of course i think it will bring more um you know benefit if if um SMS providers switch over to, to enhanced messaging or let's say RCS because uh, that's what customers actually expect. So they want to see pictures, they want to see, they want to click links. And of course, I, uh, as, um, as, uh, as what already was mentioned before, the, the tap rates are twice as higher as, um, as for SMS. So there's also a higher conversion for this type of messages. But maybe that's something that Nick can answer better because they have done a lot of analysis about this topic. I can. Thanks. <laughs> um, on RCS, RCS is actually more uh, advanced than WhatsApp in terms of its actual functionality. WhatsApp's still fairly basic in terms of what it can actually do. That's not to say that it won't change and it won't change rapidly because obviously with WhatsApp, they've just got a small, well, they can have a small team of developers and they can apply that very quickly as opposed to RCS, which then has to go through the standardization process, which has already taken what about 13 years to date. So who knows how long any more changes could take. So, so in terms of that, yeah, um, RCS potentially is, in an advanced position um, than WhatsApp. Obviously, WhatsApp, based on users, is in an advanced, more advanced position than RCS in terms of could this, can the functionality, can this be applied to SMS? In theory, it can. Um, to a certain extent, you could probably add rich cards. Um, there's certainly some providers out there doing rich cards on, on SMS. Um, some sent as an MMS, some uh, actually using as, as kind of SMS functionality as opposed to MMS. But I think the other point on there is that a lot of operators um, are actually pricing their MMS uh, at a similar rate to ATP SMS now, rather than charging a premium. So that in itself is giving greater richness two brands on a channel that they're already very familiar with. And that in itself should help with the progression to whatever the next platform is, whether it is WhatsApp, whether it is RCS, Viber, Line, WeChat, Kakao, et cetera, depending on where you are in the, in the world. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so one more question, and then I think we'll, we'll carry on with the conversation. Uh, a little bit of a long one, so bear with me. But somebody has asked, uh, picking up on programmable workflows, so Raj, I probably will be for you. Um, does the panel have a view on the alignment of contact center as a service and CPaaS? Will these developments, along with AI integration and programmable uh, communications, change enterprise communications and customer engagement forever? Or will this just become another channel to manage end customers? Okay, uh, that's 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 a long question. Very long. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Nick, uh, please add. Uh, you know, after I give my comments, uh, of course, you know, I don't know what's going to happen uh, in the future, uh, so I can't look forever. But uh, my point of view is that uh, yes, you know, uh, when you think about contact center service, right? Uh, there, uh, specifically, the workflows that are there or the interactions that we can imagine, right? As as Julia was saying, that uh, they've been able to bring down uh, the the contact center, you know, engagements uh, or automate the contact center engagements by as high as sixty seven percent. That's a reality which which is happening at this point of time. And specifically, when you bring in programmable workflows, when you bring in AI, uh, yes, you know, you can see a whole lot of optimization which will come in. Uh, and the 67% is is uh, is a very good number. I've not heard that before. I'll, I'll speak to you, Julia, on that. But yes, we've been seeing a lot of uh, you know optimizations that companies are seeing specifically in this area. And uh, you know uh, the point is that what would you do with that? What kind of interactions would you actually put on on that chatbot on that workflow? Uh, to ensure that at the end of the day, the customer who is interacting doesn't become uh, irritated, right? Uh, because that's there's a level to which the customer will also interact with somebody who is not human. Uh, because at the end of the day, the emotional emotion cannot come in, while uh, the, the artificial intelligence will show some intelligence, right? So there's a there's a balance which will which will kick in, and as the uh, you know the the technology uh, you know uh, kind of stabilizes and grows on top of it. We'll see a lot of things happening in this area. And I'm sure more and more we'll be interacting with machines and less with human in the in the near future, right? Specifically with uh, A to P or you know machines to uh, to human interactions going up 
uh, you know, in the near future. That's that's my point of view. Nick, uh, I'd, I'd say look at the Terminator, the movie. <laughs> so, I mean, look at how people engage with. Okay, that was Cyborg from the future, but but the, you know, it, it's how people engage with technology, with with chatbots. You know, in terms of Arnie did whatever the kid wanted, you know, the kid to do because he's sent back to protect him. Are, consu- are chatbots there to protect us, to help us, or, or are they just going to be money grabbing um, robots from the future to kind of tap into our disposable income? That's kind of, I think, the question. It's, it's how do we want to engage with them? How will we engage with them? And from how will they engage with us? You know, and ultimately that will probably set a, a precedent in terms of how successful they'll become because the platforms are there or will be there. They kind of are there. And it's just really encouraging the brands to use them or to put more faith in them. We did research for a client last year, big piece of consumer research, and it kind of showed that 20% of, of people were happy to engage with chatbots, 80% still are, are still wary of them because they don't know what ultimately, you know, kind of the chatbots trying to promote or trying to achieve. So I think that's something that will probably shape whether this alignment of contact center as a service and CPASS and the whole of programmable communications really kind of defined things in the future. So yeah, Terminator, one, two, well, or three. Well, well Nick, uh, I, I have to object with that one because I, I think I have some, some better numbers for chatbots. And as mentioned before, I think it really depends on, on the intelligence behind uh, the tool and the exact use case. So the problem that comes up uh, around AI and chatbots is that we are still thinking about Terminator when thinking about a bot and we are far away from Terminator. So um, the problem is, if we expect a bot to answer every question, every problem, we will be frustrated and the customer will be frustrated. But if we have simple use cases, for example, for I did one project with a German uh, car brand and we just analyzed the, you know, the, the customer journey, the, uh, the flow, and we found out that people who are uh, ordering test drives are much more willing to buy than people that are just still looking for, for information because they are further advanced in the whole process. So uh, so we put the chatbot just in this area and just with this simple uh, solution of uh, uh, booking test drives and and our conversion was really uh, much, much higher than before when, when people were just using forms. But the problem is uh, start with little project and then extend it and um, and if, if we come back to, to the Terminator, uh, this, this might be frustrating. So, but if you use the chatbots for simple solutions or simple uh, sales process optimizations, it's, it's a great tool. And it's like every tool, uh, tools can be used for positive and negative things. That's uh, up to the humans to decide. Thanks, thanks everyone. Some really interesting perspectives there. Um, so if we could kind of get back to, to the, the more general discussion here then, you know, without wanting to state the obvious here, and I suppose even more so in, in light of the kind of the, the last kind of 18 months that we've had in the acceleration of kind of digital transformation as a whole, as a result of COVID, how do we scale conversational commerce, you know, in the current environment that we have, you know, to kind of meet the demands that I can only imagine are, are, are growing? Yeah, um, let, 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 me, uh, let me reply first. Sure. Um, I mean, as you say, like COVID has been a, a huge accelerator uh, mm-hmm. from, from this digital transformation. I mean, we were already recording like an, an, increasing, an increasing demand of brands uh, launching either the chatbot or their business message uh, uh, conversations on Vibers to, uh, to contact with their, with their consumers. But obviously like the COVID has been an accelerator and, and this change is not going to, to turn back and it's going to, 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 to continue. Uh, on our side, uh, initially, when brands started to, to, to launch a business conversation, they were more uh, launching what we were calling a, a one-way flow where they were sending promotional transactional message and they were still, you know, uh, figuring out how they are going to do a conversational uh, while we were having already the, the product live. And um, the level of discussion that brands now are having, they really want to go uh, to, to, to go much faster in the way they are, they are launching their solutions. Uh, I mean, talking on Viber on my side, but uh, more, more globally speaking, and where they are, really, they are, they are pushing to solutions to migrate uh, their, uh, their conversations 
uh, to the next levels and to uh, unify all the, the message they're sending on a regular basis uh, to, their brand, to, to their users, to a channel that, where the users are going to, uh, to reply to them, where they are going to track the history, uh, and where they are going to, uh, to, to offer them uh, uh, an additional level of, uh, uh, of services. And uh, on our side, we're trying to, uh, to, uh, um, to, to leverage our products to fit these needs uh, as that is uh, booming uh, increasingly. Sure, uh, uh, Natalie, uh, you know, uh, here specifically you talked about COVID and, and uh, you know, we need to actually look at it a bit differently as for me. Uh, if you just look at one portion of the customer journey in terms of buying, right, or the, or the buying experience that the customer has, and just try to digitize that in, in, a, in a better manner or uh, in a different manner, it's not going to work. Uh, so, for example, you know, if, if I look at uh, in today's scenario, specifically from an India context, I'm not going out. You know, most of our, our places out here is in into lockdown. Uh, that doesn't mean that we are not buying. Uh, uh, you know, if if you look at uh, before COVID, the only place that I could buy is uh, you know online is an e-commerce website. But today. Uh, every shop is closed otherwise. And if you're a car company, if you're a jewelry company, uh, you know, uh, or, or if you're in white goods, uh, it doesn't mean that you, you just shut down your business and go home, right? And that's where uh, the, the journey of the customer in terms of what you want to do, you know, if you want to buy a car, what are the different things that you want to, want to do? And, and, and can I give you similar experience sitting in front of a laptop and buying the car? Right, is, is what we need to think about. And that's where a combination of multiple things come in. And that's what even the last question was that, you know, when, when you're thinking about a CPaaS and, and uh, a customer journey per se, uh, is there something where you can, you can reimagine the way customer is, is kind of interacting with you? And, and actually, we have done that. Today, uh, you know, we have a customer in, in India, uh, which is a car company, is a car OEM. Uh, from and and you can buy a car online, and then you can go and buy a, car, a fridge online, and then you can also buy a jewelry online, right? And and the experience that you're going to get is a combination of human and and bots and and systems, right? And and bringing everything together is is what is answering the customer's experience journey, and they're quite happy about it, both the company and the customer. So we cannot look at it, uh, you know, and solve one part of the entire thing, then it may not work. If you try and solve the entire thing, it, it may give you uh, tremendous results. Uh, that's that's the way we are seeing in the, it in the market at least. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so then if if we kind of look at it from the, you know, the perspective of, of the brands who, uh, you know, maybe are sitting on the fence in terms of really gearing up their kind of uh, conversational commerce, you know, offering. What would you say is, you know, how can they best effectively leverage uh, this kind of new and emerging technology? You know, if maybe what would you say is the maybe the one thing that they need to bear in mind when kind of approaching these these kind of deployments in future? Any thoughts? I thought they just got to go for it in terms of just five what I've been saying, uh, you know, they've yeah. got to put more faith in the platform and they've got to have more confidence in the technology. So if you, you know, if you look at it from an RCS perspective, we hear from aggregators who are saying, we're trying to sell to a brand brand comes back to, to, a, you know, they've checked the size of their existing mobile database. Let's say it's come back and they found five to 10% of those um, opt-ins, let's say, uh, are RCS enabled. So they then say, well, we don't want to communicate with that 5 or 10%. We want to reach 100%. So we'll just send an SMS. But the fact remains that, you know, in terms of the level of engagement that they'll get probably from, let's say, that 10% will actually be similar to what they'll probably actually ascertain through if they sent it out with everyone an SMS. So then if you then add the richness, the functionality of, of chatbots, uh, you know, then all of a sudden they, the whole experience becomes so much more engaging. And then as, as brands see that, they will start to use the channel more and more. You know, so, you know, our, my view is that I think the whole approach to something like RCS is fundamentally wrong. It should be an OTT approach where 
here's the platform and you just go and give it to the brands to go and play with go and start creating followers you know don't worry about trying to make money on it for now get people using it get them communicating with you you know you know because if you think the obvious example is twitter because every brand is on Twitter, but it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't do a lot. You know, it's good for messaging. It's okay, it's not particularly, not a particularly effective sales channel. But in terms of getting your message across to your followers, it's fantastic. But then why can't RCS, why can't WhatsApp, Viber, etc., start to do something similar, just become an engagement channel, get people using it to, you know, create that level of interaction between a consumer and a brand and then look to monetize it. That's effectively what all the OTTs have done. Get scale, gradually look to monetize. I think the issue that we've got from an RCS perspective is that everyone's desperate to monetize RCS right now. And maybe there's got to be a different way of doing it. I mean, I have so many follow on questions and we're actually running out of time. So I'm just going to rush through a couple of these, but we did have a quick audience question that I wanted to get to. So let's just quickly do that. So somebody has asked, can SMS be conversational or do we need to move to a rich mess to rich messaging for conversations? Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, oh, sorry, Julia. No, no, up to you. I mean, I, I don't think that SMS today is conversational. I mean, uh, I'm receiving different SMS. I probably never reply to one SMS from my life. Uh, maybe I'm the only one, but I don't think so. Um, and yeah, I think SMS is not conversational. It has not been built uh, like it. Uh, it has never been developed like it. And, uh, and you don't have seen a lot of progress on SMS for the past uh, five or 10 years. And, I don't. I, I, I have not seen any progress here, and I, I think that conversations are now uh, uh, are, are now in any way uh, uh, done in other platforms. I mean, on Viber, on WhatsApp, on, on other messengers, on other new platforms like TikTok or whatever, else, where there are pure conversation between users uh, with brands now uh, uh, coming inside, uh, and after all, brands have to write, to find the right balance regarding like uh, which terms, how they want to approach the users on which platforms, uh, what kind of, what type of conversation they want to have. And obviously they should not replicate the same or the same uh, usage that they were doing on SMS or to, uh, to, uh, uh, or to, um, uh, uh, to update the way uh, they were sending SMS and adapt it to, uh, to the channel they are, uh, they will be using in the, in the future. I mean, this is key. I guess also it's about metrics. You get metrics. You can understand exactly what's happened with the campaign on RCS. On SMS, it's very, very basic. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, I've only got a minute left, but I mean, if anybody would like to give any kind of closing thoughts just in terms of how we're seeing the, you know, seeing the sector kind of progress over the next five to 10 years, you know, are people, are we seeing a, a step change, a shift of people kind of, heeding Nick's word and getting on with it? Are we seeing that progress kind of coming coming to the forefront? Slowly. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'll take, I'll take that quiet for, for maybe, maybe not as fast as it needs to happen. It's but. not, you know, for everything we're seeing, every all the adoption certainly of rich messaging is a lot slower mm. than we were, you know, I think everyone was expecting, you know, for whatever reason, but it will happen. And, you know, at some point it will be massive. It just needs, when will that inflection point be? I think we, we think it'll probably be about three, four years time. Okay. That's our view. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that was the last question for me. As you guys know, I had so many more questions to ask you, but I, I thank you so much for your time. Um, David, I'll hand back to you. Um, cheers. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Natalie and the panellists there for an excellent uh, conversation on conversational commerce there. Uh, really, really insightful. So thank you very much for your time there.